Um, so my next guest is supposed to be Dr. Jennings, but she's not here because she's hard at work uh, and she has a family issue to attend to. Here we have um, in, um, sorry, to replace Dr. Jennings is Mr. Ga. Can we welcome Mr. Ga? Now, he's here to talk about, you know Fitbits, right? Fitbits, they tell you how your body is performing and you can fine tune a little bit of your performance. He's going to tell you more about what the, he's off, he, he has a product that does more than Fitbit. They can help you maximize your work performance. Maybe uh, enable you to work better, figure out the best uh, job for you and will it get you promoted? <laughs> a good chance if you do the right thing. <laughs> okay, so let me pass you on to him. Thanks. Thank you very much uh, for the opportunity tonight. Uh, oh, yeah, of course, I need this. Um, the topic is human analytic, new frontier workforce performance management, blah, 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 very scientific. But what uh, I'm going to share with you and talk about today, essentially, it's about managing our individual well-being when we perform a certain task, when we are working, uh, so that while how do we manage things like stress? How do we know that we are in a stress level that is already crossed the red line? And how does your company know that you're already in a red zone so that they can do adjustments so that you, know, you become healthy again and then the work performance consequentially will improve? This is what we're gonna, I'm going to tell you all about and that's what Datalytic, our company, does best. Uh, we make, I'll show you later on, you know, Kevin talked about Fitbit. We're not in a Fitbit business like in a wearables, but we make these devices worth wearing, and I'll, I'll show you why. And um, I'll skip this. Do you know that, uh, you probably know, but you may not know exactly what it is. Uh, you, you see the symptom, but you do not know the cause, right? So what do I mean by this? In the workplace that we work in, regardless of where you work, whether it's outdoor, indoor, you're, you're the pilot and you're flying, there's a lot of factors that are affecting your health, right? So work for sure impacts your health. If you do not know how to manage the factors, the circumstances that's in the workspace itself, context impacts your health, right? Context meaning the environment that you work in. If you're a pilot, commercial pilot, Whereas fighter pilot, you are in an extremely stressful environment. There's some quite often beyond the normal human factors that can tolerate. That's why they're special and so not everybody can be a fighter pilot. So the context of your work affect your health directly, right? Even your activities at work affects your health. <coughs> Sitting is probably one of the most damaging uh, Inactivity or activity depends on what you, how you see it. That can affect your health, right? The kind of uh, side effect that you will have on eventually causing you a, a, a damage to your health is substantial and is proven. The air that we breathe in in the buildings in the office can be a factor that is affecting your health. It will affect your health if it's not the right level. <laughs> Sounds familiar? And the screen time. Whether you're walking, whether you're eating, whether you are working, whether you're waiting for the bus, there's endless screen time. And that itself is, uh, well, I have to say that I'm one of the, the ones um, that is not doing right in this space. My boy will testify to you that he's too much on his screen time, right? So screen time affects our health. Overexposure to devices or the environment factor that you are exposed to whether it's ozone level, it's outdoor uh, air quality, it affects your health. How about food? Singapore, Singaporeans' favorite uh, topic, food. Food, of course, affects your health. What goes in will affect your health and well-being. And how about sleep? Right? If you have to work shift, you have to work very, very odd hour, or you are made to work long hour, eventually it will affect your health. Right? And why do I say this? Because just take sleep as an example. Sleep deprivation can cause all this health factor eventually, 
if you do not know how to manage it or if it's a prolonged uh, effect on your body. So I told you, you probably know what I'm talking about, but more from the symptom side. Well, this guy looks tired, he looks like he can't focus, and all these things are symptoms, right? You're seeing the side effect of that. But what is causing that kind of tiredness, the kind of, uh, you know, he can't focus or she can't focus, he doesn't seem to be performing to the job. These are just observation. And this is the part where it's affecting the individual. The side, not the side effect, the direct impact is in the physio and physical impact to the individual. In the area of, for example, chronic fatigue. Sleep deprivation can cause you chronic fatigue or your burnout. You already crossed the red line and you feel like your, my energy level is on the down every day. I wake up, I drag myself to work. I don't know why. I love my job and yet I have to drag myself to work. All these are burnout factors, right? Uh, staff health problem, lower performance, safety, liability. So from the symptom, from the individual and how it's affecting you, eventually it will cost the organizations that you work in either money, time, or the overall performance of the company because the individual put together made up the company, the services, and the product that they sell, right? And worse still, if you are performing a critical function job, you may even affect a greater group of people outside the company. Think of the job of a pilot, right? Example, example, example. The most recent one last year somewhere in Europe, uh, uh, airline German Wings, pilot is suicidal, yet they put him on the schedule, they put him on a flight, and then instead of flying to the destination, he flew into the Alps, right? So the person is already under stress, but nobody detected that, and yet he's put on the schedule of the flight, and disasters uh, happened, and people lost their life. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, tragic result happened. So, I can go on and on and on and on. Health-related uh, issues that drive work performance that eventually drive cost to the greater society, right? And this one is a lot closer to home. Somebody who fell asleep at a wheel because she has been working for too long uh, at a, at a job, on the job itself, right? So I've shown you a lot of uh, you know, what is happening, what you see as an observation, as a symptom of the person that is kind of performing the job. And I'm telling you, there are real factors that's driving all this observation of the person and the cost that it can uh, cost the company or the individual or the society. But in order to improve that, you have to know where to zoom in and solve the problem, isn't it? Because if you can't, you don't know what to solve, you do not know what to measure, how can you ever change anything, right? You're just shooting in the dark. You just pull out your whatever tools you have and you think you're solving the right thing, but actually you're not. And today's event is about future me. Uh, I want to mention that in order to get to the future, you have to survive the present. So you have a lot of planning, you have aspiration, you're inspired by a lot of uh, you know, ideas and, and, and uh, thoughts of uh, encouraging words from your peers or whoever. But if you want to get there, you better survive today first. If you can't even survive today, you can't get to tomorrow, and what's the future all about? So if you don't have good health, you can forget about tomorrow, right? And that's where data analytics come in, is essentially our product and services that we provide to organizations. We take the guest work out of human factor risk in workspace. There's no more, no more guessing, I think he's tired, I think he's just overworked, right? From our data, our platform, and our services that we provide, we can actually pinpoint and tell you that this person is already in the red zone. You better do something about his work schedule or his work task, otherwise something will happen, all right? So we give you that kind of clarity to the uh, individual of the workplace. And how do we do that? Um, we collect all this kind of data, and that's what Calvin said, you know, Fitbit. Fitbit is just one of the example of a device where we can collect all this data. This data is from the individual, from the wearables that you wear. One of this, 
Fitbit devices, or even more advanced, to, uh, in the near future, you don't even have to wear a Fitbit uh, bracelet. You can actually stick a sticker on your body and it collects all those data. Your heart rate, your heart rate variations, your sleep pattern, for example. All this data, uh, it's all about you, right? The individual is all about me, it's all about you. And through our software, we tell you, or tell the individual, whether you are in the proper zone of stress, work fatigue, or whether you're already burned out. So we strive to, using our tools to help our organization and enterprises uh, solve some of these questions. We help them answer all these questions so that they know whether this person is right for the job, whether this team of people is the right mix of people uh, assigned to the task, all right? So, Data Analytics is the company's name, and uh, like I said, uh, in terms of workforce management, risk factor of human factor, risk management of human factor, there's no more guesswork. Our software and our services take the guesswork out of workforce risk management. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, uh, just a quick question. Um, is this widely implemented at the moment, or, do you, or it's at the start? Uh, we are actually a young startup company, but we already have use cases, uh, especially in Europe. Uh, we have worked with the UK military, right. where as part of the selection process of where they assign the soldiers to what vocation, using our uh, model, the UK military are able to uh, provide a more accurate assignment of the person to the right job, right? And also, uh, using this kind of a predictive model that we have, they are able to use the data and report that we have to make sure that this person, before they even send them out overseas for assignment or uh, you know, combat, uh, whether they are even able to survive the first day. Oh, OK. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you. Who knew? That's, that's currently happening now. And I think increasingly, data will be a, a big part of our lives. Uh, a big part of our work.